praise the Lord. Well, let's go ahead to our, our text for our teaching in Colossians, the first chapter. Glory to God. If you have not been with us for any of this is, for the, any of this is, hallelujah, for any of this teaching, you're going to have to go to the internet and um, listen to our services uh, online because we obviously cannot go back to six or seven services and uh, recover ground. But we will read our foundational text starting in the book of Colossians chapter 1 and reading from verse 1 through verse 12. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Hallelujah. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day you heard it and, know, and knew the grace of God. Now, Real quickly, just let's say, understand that Paul is writing here in terms of that the gospel has gone to the world, it's brought forth fruit all over the world, and it has brought forth fruit among them. Amen. This is not a, a declarative statement that every single last one of them are bringing forth fruit. He's talking in generalities here in this part of this, but he is talking about, he is talking to the church. And this is important because we need to understand in light of things that get taught sometimes, people can teach stuff that's it's, uh, out of skew or out of, out of balance uh, in an effort to promote a, a narrative and usually a narrow narrative, a, nar a, a narrow point of view. And they want to major or harp on something or build a, build a kingdom around something. And so they'll find scriptures and Build a, that, and take them and misapply them and create a narrative that's inaccurate or skewed. And so we need to understand what Paul is doing. He's writing, he's making a state, just making a general statement. This gospel has been preached all over the world. It's bringing forth fruit and it brings forth among, among, you, among you. Amen. Uh, some people come in here and say, well, they're under grace and they're all bearing fruit because they're under grace. Well, you can't bear fruit unless you're under grace, but just because you're under grace doesn't mean you bear fruit. All right? So we need to be, you know, just make sure that these things, we understand these things. Um, and so he says that we also learn from Epaphras, Epaphras, how do you go? Our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire. Now let's just stop here. I'm going to make this statement. I made this at the beginning of this uh, series. I'm, I'll need to reiterate it throughout the series. Paul is about to make, have a prayer and a desire for the saints at the church of Colossae, and he's going to say certain things. Now, let me say this. According to some narratives that are out there today, none of what he's praying is applicable because the things he's praying don't have to be done or, or acted on or instituted because they're already in their lives because they're under grace. That is a misinterpretation of the subject of grace, a misapplication of it, and it is not, not biblically sound or accurate. Paul would not pray and desire that they would do the following things if they were already working in life and there was no need for them to do anything because they were going to happen automatically. Some people say, I'm blessed because I'm under grace. I'm, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm still going to prosper. I got news for you, honey. You go, don't tithe and you don't give to God, you're not going to prosper. Because God calls you a robber. That's Old Testament. He didn't change his mind under the new. Amen. I can sleep with anybody I want to sleep with, and it don't matter. Well, you know, we just read the, the last week, we talked, or a couple weeks ago, how that in, in uh, think, 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, it says that this is the will of God, even your sanctification. And the next words out of his mouth was that you abstain from fornication. So it does matter. These things do matter. And so we have to understand that there are biblical principles that are there that say that we, we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but then the Bible tells us not to yield our members as servants of unrrighteousness because you become, you'll become subservient to that, that if you do. The Bible tells us to put on the works of righteousness. Amen. The Bible tells us to put off the old man and put on new. He's talking to saints when he says this. Amen. So we have to understand there are biblical truths that are what we could refer to as positional truths, but then we have to apply those to our life. 
Amen. You know, really, the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish. Jesus was raised from the dead. Uh, in fact, we got a very interesting thing. The Bible tells us that when we talk, start opening up the books of life, they look for those whose names aren't blotted out. Now, as far as God was concerned, when Jesus Christ died on the cross and was raised from the dead and shed his blood, all humanity was saved. But I got, you know, the, the other side of that is on the day of judgment, there are going to be people who, whose names that, that God said recorded as being saved that got blotted out. That went over big. Why did they get blotted out? Because they didn't do what he said to do. Hello. See, God's a faith God. And he was, his faith is they're all going to accept it. But there'll be those who don't, they'll get blotted out. Man, can you, can you imagine spending eternity in hell? Don't, you know, don't really want to go there, but spending eternity in hell knowing your name was already in the book and because you didn't do something, it got blotted out. It's all Jesus. Jesus did it all. No, you've got to accept. You've got to walk by faith. You've got to receive it by faith. Yeah, right, right. Amen. If you don't receive it, it won't work. That went over big. God don't make you get saved. He makes provision for you. Amen. So, uh, I can tell y'all excited about that. Nobody likes the responsibility side of anything. Yeah. Man, we can preach about how the blood bought you and how the blood washed you and how the blood brought you out. Glory to God. You'll be running and shouting. Then we come along and say, now that the blood's done all that, you've got you to stop doing this and you need to stop doing that and you need to live this way. And then nobody... Get all huffed and put cheeks, poke out, lip come out get mad. Get, I mean, you get out your spiritual uh, nerf tar, uh, 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 dart gun and start shooting them at me while I'm preaching. Hello? <laughs> Put it down, Jeff. Jeff's got one of those, one of those toy uh, colonial pistols back there. Just shot at me. Hallelujah. All right, so Paul, Paul's going to pray this prayer. I'm gonna hear, I want you to hear some of the things in here. So I, I, we do not cease to pray and to desire that you might be filled with all the knowledge of his will. The epinosis, the clear, precise, accurate, and uh, experiential knowledge of his will. And then he tempered that knowledge of that will with this, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I know a lot of people who know what God's will is, but they don't temper it with wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. And we talked about that already. Th listen to this one. That you might walk worthy of the Lord. And you got people that are teaching people they're already walking worthy of the Lord no matter what they're doing because they're under grace. Then why would Paul pray that you would walk worthy of the Lord? Listen to this. Not only walk worthy of the Lord, but unto all pleasing. He wants you to walk. Now listen, we're not talking about uh, a works-based life where you get up every morning and think, oh my God, oh my God, did I do 400 Hail Marys and 300, you know, um, Our Fathers and did, I, and did I do enough penance today? We're not talking about that. But we are talking about walking in accordance with the commands of the Word of God. That when God says, put off the old man and put on the new, that's what you do. When God says, come out from among them and be you separate and touch not the unclean thing, that's what you do. Then when God says that we, we live a life that is pleasing unto him in accordance with holiness and righteousness, that's what we do. Amen. That it says we abstain from fornication, that's what we do. Hello. And we don't run off and say, well, no, that applies to me because that's law, that's legalism, that you're just preaching bondage. No, I'm preaching Bible. Because remember, remember what Paul said. See, the people who tell you you can live in sin and it'd be okay are preaching bondage. So how do you say that? Because between Romans 6 and Romans 8, Paul says, makes this statement. He says, if you yield your members as servants of unrighteousness, that is whose servant you are. So people who preach you can do whatever you want to do and it's okay are preaching that, you know, are putting you into bondage to sin. They're, they're bondage preachers. Because see, the liberty that we have is the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. The freedom from sin, the freedom from Satan's dominion, the freedom from the, from the shackles of the results of sin. Because there, there's a law called the law of sin and death. And see, Jesus came to set you free from that. The law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Isn't that right? Now, that follows Romans 8, 1, where not to my notes, forget it. We'll just go wherever we get there and we get there. Shannon preached her first sermon the other day at, at pastor's class. And uh, she said she got about halfway through her first point on her paper and that was it. Yeah, she's her father's child. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hallelujah. And she had them crying. <laughs> they were sitting in class crying. Her, she was doing the prodigal son, and she had them all crying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, you've got people who come on and say, that's not in the original Greek. You know, the original Greek, that's down in verse 4. They just moved it up. And that, listen, I'm going to give you a little Bible lesson here. We're going to do an exegesis. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a little exegesis here. Go, go. All right. Romans 8, 1, where people use that state, because what they say is, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus that made me free from the law of sin and death. They're just saying, I can't ever be condemned. And the Bible says, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. Right. <clears throat> if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. How's my heart not going to condemn me? You walk according to Scripture. You walk according to righteousness. You walk according to holiness. Amen. Now, the reason they say that is they go back to where, you know, how many of you ever heard of the, the King James Version? I know you've heard the key. I bet, I bet they use a 1611 still in England, don't they? No, I'm just, I'm just messing. Have you ever seen people walk around with the baseball caps on? KJV, 1611 KJV. And you know the 1611 King James Version is the only Bible. I mean, one, one woman told Brother Hagin one time, she said, if the King James was good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Yeah. Help us, Lord. <laughs> you know, I mean, Paul was using the King James in the year 80 A.D. And it was written in 1611. You know, I mean, I don't know. They, I guess they, they, Scotty beamed it back or something. You know, <laughs> they opened up a wormhole and went back in time. And he got a, he got a hold of a KJV. For, no. Well, anyway, the revised version came out in the late 1800s. Now, there is there are two main Greek texts that they use. One's called the the, the man schools and one's called the men's schools and, really, and, and they're also referred to as the majority text and the minority text. Okay? Now if you'll study an, in biblical accuracy, you'll find out that the majority text is accurate it's somewhere in the range of 90 to 95 percent of the time what they can, what they can compare it with to previous, now understand this, the Greek we have is not the original Greek manuscripts. They're, 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 they're copies. Mm -hmm. We actually have translations like the Latin uh, uh, Vulgate or whatever that is, that it predates some of our Greek text. Okay? We, have, we do. And so you have to compare in comparison. The major majority text is more accurate in, in the range of 99%. The minority text is only accurate 5 to 8% of the time. There are whole passages left out in the minority text. How many, how many have ever read uh, Matthew's, uh, uh, Mark's uh, um, charge to the church? And these signs of all them that believe, all that's left out in the minority text. The whole passage. It stops at, like in verse 9 of that last chapter of Mark. Um, here in, in, uh, in Romans 8, 1, which we're quoting, that part of the verse is, is italicized because the minority text says it wasn't there. The majority text has it there. And so there is a debate between which Greek text is the one. Now, if you, I'm going to be honest with you. If you go study the minority text and look at some of the things they left out, there's a lot of challenges to the deity of Christ and all kinds of things in the minority text where they switch and change and leave stuff out. That's why I am not a proponent of things like the NIV and that kind of thing. I can look at some things and see how things are worded and, and, and glean some stuff from it. But, you know, when they're going to leave whole passages out, I'm not for it. Yeah. Okay? Romans 8, 1 is one of those texts. I had a big discussion with a guy one day about this. I'm saying, look, you're, you're going on a version that was based on the minority text, and, and that is inaccurate in so many places. You've got to be careful. All right? And so the majority text has it there. <clears throat> and let me say something. There is therefore no now condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We'll go to 8, 1. Romans. <clears throat> we'll come back to Colossians. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But just for the sake, let's just leave that out. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now let me say something. The righteousness is fulfilled in those who walk not after flesh, but after the Spirit. It's still the same thing. Whether you have it in verse 1 or verse 4, it still says the same thing. That if you walk after the flesh, you're not going to fulfill the righteousness of God. 
Hello. You cannot, I mean, Paul made it very clear. Amen. He talks about um, verse 12 of the same chapter. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we do through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the flesh or the body, ye shall live. Amen. Um, verse 16 of Romans 6. But know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey your servants, uh, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So throughout the scripture we find out that there is a demand from the word of God that we do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. And it does not happen automatically. The Apostle Paul, the great preacher of grace. The Apostle Paul who was called up into the third heaven. The Apostle Paul who was stoned and left for dead. The Apostle Paul who went through an entire litany of things he went through to stay faithful to the course that God called him to. Hallelujah. You know, you know three days and nights in the deep. And I mean, he was flogged and he was beaten. And he was let down over walls. And I mean, he was stoned. He goes on and on and on. And it talks about all things he went through to, be, to stay faithful to the call of God. Says this, I buffet my body daily. I keep it under. Mm -hmm. Paul did not go, I'm under grace. I don't have to do anything about my body. He said, I wait every day. I buffet it. I discipline it. I keep it under. <clears throat> Amen. Paul even said in one place, he does certain things that, though, that so in the end, he wouldn't, uh, though he saved others, he wouldn't be found a castaway. Mm -hmm. We have to stay sound biblically and sound and accurate the theologically. We cannot run off after little tangents of, of ways of stuff just because everybody around you, oh, this is wonderful, this is wonderful, this is wonderful, oh, what a wonderful message. Well, if it's putting people into captivity and bondage, it's not a wonderful message. If it's bringing them from walking according to whole, the whole counsel of the Word of God, it's not a wonderful message. It might be wonderful you, to your flesh. Now, how many know? You can go into a restaurant and sit down, and they tell you you're going to pay this price, and this is all you're going to get. You know, and your flesh is going, man, that ain't a whole lot for that price. You go to all you can eat buffet, and your body says, whoa, I love that. I get all I want for this price. So your flesh loves. So your flesh loves lack of discipline. You know it. Hello? And, for, and people preach this. Why do people preach certain things? I'm just going to tell you this. Follow the money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. You want to know why certain things get preached? And, and because people come and people buy the tapes, people buy the books, and people fill up the buildings. And there's money. Do so preachers really do that? There are still people greedy of filthy lucre. And they will rape and prostitute the entire body of Christ to fill up their own pockets and their own war chest and have popularity. That went over big, but it's still truth. We have, listen, and I'm going to tell you something. When it falls apart, you know who gets hurt? The people. Mm -hmm. I've seen the preachers grab the money and run, and the people get left in the dust, and then they, 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 they just pick up the next message and go preach it and get money again. They've learned, they've learned to gimmick the people. You need to be wise. And you need to, as a Christian, you want to grow in grace, and you want to grow in the knowledge of the Lord, and you want to grow to a place that you're stable and steady and consistent, and you're not a child anymore. You're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. My daughter's in a Bible school right now, and they've got people who come in. They all think they're the hot shots of the world, and they're trying to, they, they, get, they go and invite all these first-year students to come home and eat with them, and they get to the house, and they have another Holy Ghost meeting after church, because they're, they're, the church meeting at the Bible school is not good enough, and they have this big, and they prophesy, and they preach, and then if they want to, and, and then they feed them, that if they want something to eat before they start all that meeting, they're unspiritual. They can build their own following. There's always people who want to be in front and have the head and have all the money. And I'm going to tell you something. If we had all the money in the body of Christ that was wasted on charlat spiritual charlatans, Jesus could have already come back. Satan's always working to hoard the money out of the churches into places where it's not going to do what the local church is supposed to do. You're always getting huge sums. I found out just the other day that there's, there's a major ministry. I won't call, tell you what vein it operates in, and, uh, you know, and, but it's a, it's a media ministry. 
in that ministry, they have 13 one, $1 million dollar plus mansions around the country. Now, I'm sorry, you don't need 13 put $1 million. Well, we travel. We've got a $100,000 travel trailer for the dogs. And get on television and tell people, oh, you got to send your money, you got to send your money, you got to send your money. To what? So Fido can have a, 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 his own RV? How many people are going to hell while Fido has a, a, a pet groomer in the RV grooming them while they ride down the road so you can be comforted by your dog? There's a problem there. People are dying and going to hell and you're worried about your dog. Don't you know all dogs go to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm serious. Well, there's nothing wrong. See, we preach. See, Bro Brother Hagin tried to stop this stuff. He tried to get these people to, to, to back off and to come in and say, look, this is extreme. I don't know why I got over here. This will go over here. This is an extreme. Pull it back in. You're going to hurt the move of God. You're going to hurt the body of Christ if you don't get this back in. And, and they, they went that way anyway, and it's, and it's, it's done exactly what he said. It's hurt the body of Christ. He tried to pull them in. He tried, and they wouldn't listen. I tell you what, I mean, when, when, when somebody said, when you call somebody your spiritual father, and then they call you in for a sit down, and you don't, and you won't listen to it, uh, he's not your spiritual father. You just, you just uh, name drop to get ahead. Hello. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm associated with so and so. You know, and then when so and so says, okay, we need to talk. You're out of error. You're out of line. You're in error. I don't receive that. Wait a second now. You can't go build your ministry calling somebody's name, and then when they, then when they say, hey, you're out, of, you're out of line, that don't work that way. Now, if I'm your pastor until I tell you you're wrong, I'm never, I was never your pastor. Hello? If I'm, your, if I'm only your pastor, you know, well, you're my pastor. No, and I, but, but when I say, when I go different to what you like, I'm no, you, you pack up and leave, I'm not your pastor. I never was your pastor. Right, that's true. You weren't submitted. Right. You can't be told you're wrong. Hello. The Word of God has a lot to say about a lot of things. Amen. And we need to be submitted to it. And it's not all, listen, it's not all hunk of door. Paul had a lot of things to say about living right. And that's not legalism, and that's not bondage, and that's not law. It's Bible. Everybody say the B-I-B-L-E. Remember that little song? Oh, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. And you got so many people around, I'm a sickler for the Bible. And then you show what the Bible says. Well, I, 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 it don't apply to me. And they go find versions that don't even have it in there. The hottest, newest, latest, greatest. I'm going to get back to where I am. Because we're talking about, we're talking about, we're, we were over here in Rome, we were over in Colossians, we ran over to Romans. But in Colossians it says, that you might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing. Talking about living a life that represents the inner workings of God in your life. And it is a misnomer to think that you can live according to the flesh and walk in the blessings of the Spirit. That is an erroneous teaching. It's all the grace of see really you want to know what it is? We've dealt with it in every every era of the church since the beginning of the church. It's Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. That basically the natural doesn't matter. It's only the spiritual. The modern term from Gnosticism in the church today is Christian science. You know, you know the, the natural the natural's not even real. It's the spiritual is only real. And to say that grace is the only thing that matters and you're already blessed and you're already this and that what you do with your body doesn't matter is Gnosticism. And we've dealt with that since, since the time of Paul and John. Mm -hmm. John even wrote in John, the first uh, chapter of his epistle, he said, that which we've seen, that which we've touched, that which we've handled of the word of life. He, you know, because Gnosticism said Jesus didn't come in the flesh. He said, we saw him, we touched him, we handled him. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. We've, we've dealt with that since the beginning. Christian science teaches, you know, that, you know, that whatever happens to your flesh is not real. It doesn't matter because it's not really real. And that's what some people are teaching. Yet Paul says that you would, that you would have good works, un, uh, be, uh, have all the good works unto pleasing, pleasing him. So that means you do what the Bible says. You put off the old man, you put on the new, which is created to righteousness and holiness.
Amen. That you do away with unfruitful works of darkness. Amen. Now, not in your power. You, you, trust the, you trust the strengthening and enabling grace of God to aid you in doing that, but you still have to do it. We don't teach you not to do it. No, you got to do it. Now, you don't have to do it in your flesh. You don't have to do it in your power. You do it by the strengthening and, and, and empowering grace of God on the inside of you, but you still got to tap into that, and you still got to apply it, and you still got to do it. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> oh, me. Or help me, Jesus. You can kind of go, help, help, help me, Lord. Hallelujah. If you want to. All right? We, 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 can, get, we can get along with that. We have to govern the dictates of our flesh. Right. Amen. If you don't, you'll lead your life into, into misery. You will end up in spiritual destruction. It can cost you in the long run. It will, not only what it can, it will cost you in the long run if you don't, if you don't deal with your flesh. Now, I had someone I went to Bible school with. At the time they were in Bible school, they claimed to be a delivered homosexual. When they got out of Bible school, they went back into homosexuality. Still thinking that they were, you know, they were going to serve the Lord. They loved the Lord. They would always go to places and, and burn candles, and they'd burn weird, and they'd talk about how something spiritual was going on. Yeah, you got devils running around you. They died of rectal cancer. Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm telling you the truth. They had their opportunities. They would not repent. They would not stop. They continued to live their lifestyle, thinking that it was okay to get away with it. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. That is biblical. I had a, we had someone that was in our church in Greenville. Uh, they came to us one time, you know, and, and uh, they, they said to us, you know, they wanted to meet with us. And so the pastoral staff went and met with them. And they, they said, I, you know, well, uh, my wife just found out that, that I'm homosexual. I mean, and, and you, you think, how did you not know? I knew that the first time I saw them. I mean, I just, it just, listen, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the fact that, you know, if you're spiritual, you recognize things. You can see the Spirit. Amen. Hello? You know the Spirit in operation. And, um, and I'm like, how in the world does she, they were at a Bible school. Listen, I'm telling you, people, homosexuals show up at Bible schools. They do. And I think maybe it's the person wanting to get free. And uh, nobody, people just get so unspiritual and don't recognize stuff. Well, anyway, uh, and he wanted to be delivered. And we, so we, said, we talked to him for a while and said, yeah, you know, understand, you, you've got to change your lifestyle. You can't, we're going to pray for you. We're going to minister to you. But you've got to quit. You can't keep doing this. And um, uh, we, we laid hands on him and cast the devil out of him because he had a homosexual devil. I mean, I'm not going to get into the grossness of things. He was, he was into bestiality and everything. I mean, he, he's way off. And, uh, and, but then the word of the Lord came to me. I was an assistant pastor. I tell you, sometimes it's nice to be an assistant pastor because if you're wrong, then the pastor can cover you. <laughs> but I, the word of the Lord came to me. And I said to him, by the Holy Ghost, I said, the Lord has delivered you. But hear well. And from this day forward, if you ever go back into homosexuality, it will cost you your life. You will die. Oh, God's a God of grace and mercy. Yes, he is. And that's why he warned him. Don't say that God, God, God warned him. Are you here? No, God would have told him he loves him and, and he's, everything's all right and he has everything. He's just going to live his life full. And, you know, we love those kind of, that's not, and listen, half the time that's not prophecy. That's just some made up gooby to God people give because they want to sound like they're wonderful. You're right. I'm telling you, when God speaks, God speaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes it's wonderful, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's a warning. Uh -huh. And you need to listen. And I said, and I said to him, I said, the Lord says you'll die if you go back into homosexuality. Well, him and his wife stayed together, you know, and, and, and about, about six or seven months later, he left her. He went right back into it. Tell you, you got, you got, you got to fill yourself up. When the Spirit goeth out of a man, he goeth into the dry places, and he cometh and find the house swept, emptied, and garnished, and he entereth in, and he bringeth seven more with him worse, that are worse than the first state. And the last day of that man is worse than the first. You, I'm telling you, when you get free from something, you need to get filled up with God. And you need to get filled up with the Word. You, I'm, I'm not going to get to my notes, okay? We're over here. We're just going to hang out over here. You need to stay with the things of God. You need to put yourself under the influence of the Word. You need to, re the Bible says repent means to turn and go a different direction. It doesn't mean say, I'm sorry and keep going. Amen. Go ahead, shoot me in the back. <laughs> repent means to go in a different direction. 
Somebody go get Jeff. He's trying to shoot me. <laughs> he keeps pulling up that gun, cocking it. <laughs> it's a toy gun. All right. You got a toy gun in church? Yeah. We got Second Amendment rights in this country. The right to bear and keep arms. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I won't even get into that this morning. Hallelujah. Anyway. Why do they want to get your guns? So they can take over. Yeah. yeah. That's right. The, the, the liberal postmodern progressives want to take over and they know they got to get the guns out of the hands of the people who shoot them. Yeah. And that's why the Constitution put that Second Amendment in there so that couldn't happen. Anyway, back over here. Where was I? Greg. Thank you. <laughs> Bill, can you back it up? I've never gotten old man before. And I was like, oh man! <laughs> He left his wife. Thank you. <laughs> he, went, he went back into that sin. And about three years later, we got a phone call at the church. I was already here in Greensboro. Got a phone call at the church. And the guy called and said, look, I want you to know, I, I've repented. I've asked God to forgive me, but I'm dying of AIDS. God knew what, you know, God, it wasn't long because he was in bad, bad shape at that time. Thank God. See, God's merciful. God will save him. God will forgive him. But he was told, yeah. if you go back into that, you will die. The Lord knew he would get AIDS if he went back into it. And God didn't put AIDS on him. Right, right. right. Sleeping with that other man that had AIDS got it on him. Yeah. Now, I'm just being, I'm not, you get blunt. Well, we can't talk about this. Yes, we can. That's why that man had that. The Lord knew he would sleep with somebody that had AIDS and, he, and that would cost him his life. Well, that's just mean. You're not nice. Oh, no, 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 no. Love warned him not to so he could live. Right. Love said don't so he wouldn't die that way. That's love. Oh, no. Love is saying you accept my lifestyle. I don't accept your lifestyle because it's going to kill you. Hello? Love says stop. Amen. Isn't that right? And so, you know, I, I, I remember uh, right after I um, got to Raymond back in the 80, the year before, one year or two years before, I think it was the year before I got there, um, Dad was up in, in one of the classes. See, we need, we need to learn to listen. To, listen, we need to be sticklers for the Word, but we also need to be people of the Spirit, too. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm way off my message. Come back tonight for Colossians chapter 1. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, dad was in the middle of class and he, he stopped at the, end of, uh, at the end of class, looked up and at the back of the, of the room there, and I know which building was in, he, said, he saw a man, a, a young student, and he said, um, uh, I see a cloud of death hanging over you. He said, now... If you'll come see me three times, we can avoid that and you won't die, but you'll live. Oh, that's not the word of God. I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord unless the Holy Ghost says you're going to die. Well, give me a Bible. Well, remember the psalmist said, With long life will I satisfy thee and show, me thy, show thee my salvation, didn't it? Yeah. But he told the prophet, Go tell Hezekiah, get your house in order for you shall surely die. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stand on the scripture line. When the Holy, when God changes things up, and He's not violating His word, He's saying there are things in operation and things going on that are causing things. You're out of line with My word, and here's a warning: if you don't do this, you're, and, and remember, Hezekiah got up off his throne and asked the Lord for 15 more years and stopped the prophet on the way out because he walks in. I mean, I like these prophets of the Old Testament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get your house in order. You're going to die. All right. Yeah. That's it. No fanfare. No, you know, uh, do you want to discuss this? Nothing. Like those guys. <laughs> Live and not die in Jesus' name. All right. I don't think I put it in the right place. He's on his way out. To, Hezekiah gets up, repents, and he said, he said, I want 15 more years. He stops, goes back in, and the Lord and he goes back. He said, the Lord said, because you did this thing, you'll get 15 more years, and he walks back out the door. We need to be people of the Spirit, too. <clears throat> and standing on Scriptures 
and then violating other scriptures. And then the warning coming from the Holy Ghost through, through, through the ministers or whatever. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people who don't have the gumption to speak the word of the Lord anymore. Because they know they'll lose crowds. And they'll know they'll lose money. And they know that they'll lose popularity. And people won't buy their books. And they won't be on TBN or TNT or, or, or Daystar or wherever. Talk about how wonderful they are and how good that God is. And they won't get all that exposure. Coming up there and saying, get your house in order, you're going to die. We don't want them on television. Her ratings. What do we want? Are we after ratings? Or are we after the glorious church having not spot a wrinkle? What are we after? Are we after popularity? Are we after the pure church who walks in the Spirit, amen, and obeys God and is doing the will of the Father? What are we after? And so um, that young man, somebody came to him and said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm not going to do a thing about it. He died. I mean, and quite frankly, I, I look at some things and I go, are you dumber than dirt? Not, it wasn't a general statement over the whole class. It's pointed right at the person. And said, there's a spirit of death on you, and you come see me three times, and we can avert that. And I'm not going to do a thing about it. But you hear you're going home. Um, I was at, um, we had a banquet. Um, I'm thinking it was like an alumni banquet. Well, you know, back, back in, the, in my era, we had alumni week. Now, now alumni week runs, coincides with Winter Bible Seminar. But back in my day, we had a special week called alumni week, and the alumni would come in. We didn't, have, we didn't have Raymond Ministerial Association. So our big deal was getting the alumni together. Now we have Raymond Ministerial Association. We have regional district events all over the country. We have uh, alumni week is during Winter Bible Seminar. All, so we kind of consolidated some stuff. But back then, we had a special week called alumni week. My first one, I remember, went back out, and we had T.L. Osborne, Kenneth Copeland, um, I forgot, I got some of the tapes of that, sir, Jerry Savelle and somebody else preach. Not a bad lineup. I love T.L. Osborne. I mean, I just, I just love him, you know. He would just be preaching, he'll stop and go, wow, say that backwards, wow. Anyway, I've added to that, say it upside down, mom. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> but we were, at, we were at the banquet. We'd have a banquet, so we'd pay, and we all go, we'd go down to the Center, and we'd have a big banquet, and we'd all be in there. And a lot of people were coming home back in those days, you know, coming for Alumni Week. And, we, well, you had, you had this nice meal, had a few words. Dad spoke a few words about some stuff, and then he stops and goes, Air, another year shall come and go, and there will be three among you who will not be with us. Not that they won't be here, but they'll be absent from the earth. Oh, boy, it just took the wind out of the place. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're all, oh, it's so good to be here. Woo! Dad speaking. Woo, glory. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Three people are going to die. Then he starts naming their sin. Oh, wow. Hell yeah. Two of them were, were, were in adultery with their secretaries. And I forgot what the third one was now because it's been, it's been 20 year, 21 years ago, 31 years ago. He said, and then he went on and said this, but it does not have to be this way. If you will repent and turn from this, the Lord will grant your life. They got the reports. Then the next year, two of them died. One of them did call in and say, I, I was one of those people, Lord, but, uh, uh, Brother Hagen, but, but I repented and turned. And so he didn't die. Two of them did. Oh, I thought well, this is a faith church. We believe the word. Yeah? But don't you believe that the word of God promotes the office of the, uh, and, and ministry of the Holy Ghost? The third person of the Godhead? Yes. Amen? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, yes. who shall not speak of, things, speak of himself, but shall only say those things which he hears of me? Mm -hmm. We have to recognize that the, the Holy Ghost has a voice. Sure, right. We have the written word that keeps us in line and keeps us stable. We are sticklers for the written word. Right. But then, then God comes in and says, you know, you're, you need to change this or else. Thank God. Hello. And, there's, and I'm telling you, don't take me wrong. 
But the party that won the presidency is a party that promoted homosexuality, that promoted same-sex marriage, and promoted abortion on demand, and had got taken God out of their platform. And when they put it back in, did not get it put back in by the majority of the vote. They did the guy with the guy would just because of the political repercussions just said the majority wins and put it back in. I listened to the tape and watched the video of that of that vote. <coughs> they were furious that they were going to put it back in. And since then, there has been an unleashing of a militant homosexual spirit in our nation. Why? Because our nation voted it in. And they've unleashed that in this country. West Point just conducted their first same-sex marriage in one of their chapels. West Point. You know, the military academy, West Point, just because Don't Ask, Don't Tell is no longer in force. They just, they just performed the first same-sex marriage. Where'd that come from? People didn't listen to the Holy Ghost. That's right. You can't vote for pro-homosexuality and pro-abortion and then not expect the repercussions in the realm of the spirit of unleashing those things on our nation. Hello. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Well, go read your Bible. I know the Spirit of God was speaking to people. Let me tell you something. We just found out. Ten million evangelical Christians didn't vote. Well, they didn't want a Mormon. That went over big. And now we've got this thing running around all over the country, attacking. I mean, you're finding young people all over the place saying, I'm a homosexual, I'm a gay, I'm a lesbian, I'm a transgender, I'm bisexual. It's all over the place. Why? Because we've unleashed it on our nation. We've unleashed it on our nation. We let that devil out. We let him in. We invited him in. People weren't listening to the Spirit of God. And you don't think a judgment has come on our nation? That, that is the judgment. You, you got what you wanted. Mm -hmm. you're right. Oh, but I'm going to get money, and I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get that. <clears throat> you know, and we're going to get free health care. You know, you're not. Yeah, rations. Yeah. We did not vote according to the Word of God. We did not, people didn't vote according to the Spirit. We got, the church has to get sensitive to the voice of the Spirit again and realize that what we do does matter. What we do does matter. Stop running around under this lie saying that because you're under grace, nothing matters. God's going to bless you. God's going to promote you. God's going to honor you. And you're just going to sit in your house and have your own personal Holy Ghost meetings. I got people I know right now sitting at home right now. We, got our own, we don't go to church because we have, stay at home and have our own Holy Ghost meetings. You flake. That's strong. That's mean. No, you're acting like a granola Christian. A fruit, nut, and flake all packaged together in the same box. Get out and get under the Word of God and get under a pastor and submit where you can hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. I hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. No, you don't. Well, how do you know? Because the, because the Holy Ghost will agree with the Bible. And he says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some. He said, you're to, be, uh, you're to obey those with the rule over you. You're to get in church. Mm -hmm. I know it's strong. But I'm telling you, church, we, we, we're, in, we're, in, we're in for a rough road if the church doesn't wake up. Yeah, that's right. I don't care about the electorate of our country. I, said, I see people hear you say that. The electorate of our country as far as outside of the church are irrelevant to me. Because God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and submit and pray and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. But when his people aren't doing it, he can't do any of that. And when people, when the church isn't listening to the Holy Ghost... And when pastors won't preach the word and won't speak by the Spirit, hello, and then just placate people and, and everything. So they keep money coming in. Well, you know, if all we're going to do is just keep money coming in, let's just shut the doors and go home and go get a job working at John Deere and go plow some land. Hello. Sell our houses, downsize, go work at McDonald's and flip burgers. 
Oh, we got lots of people in our building. Well, so does, uh, who's the, who's some, Madonna. Madonna gets a lot of people in her concerts. Hello? You got a lot of rockers and musicians that are full of the devil. They get a lot of people in their concerts, fill up buildings, 60 and 70,000 people at a time. So at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100, $120 a ticket. Come to church. It's time to tithe. Oh, they want your money. What do you think Madonna wants? <laughs> she wants your money. What do you think Prince or whatever his symbol is this week <laughs> wants? Hello? What do you think all the rappers want? They want your money. And I'll just be honest with you. We want your money. We want your money not so we can build another mansion on the other side of the, of, of the world. We want your money so we can reach the people all over the world. So we can share the gospel with people. Yeah. So that we can reach people in different nations. So that, the, that this gospel can be preached throughout all the earth and then the end can come. It takes money to do it. But it's willingly because you want to. Not so we can talk about how wonderful we are. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, don't have, I don't have a problem with building a nice building, but you know what? So, at some point in time, you've got to be about, about reaching people and doing things. You, I don't care if you've got a nice car, but at some point in time, you don't need the fourth Bentley. I mean, honestly, you don't need a $25,000 guard dog. I told somebody the other day, I'll come guard your house cheaper than that. <laughs> Just give me a Smith & Wesson, I'll sit in there and watch. Hello? It won't cost you $25,000. Hello? I can sell you a cheaper dog and train him. Amen? I can make you, I guess you get your dog, put electric stock, and have him where he hates people. You won't have any problem if somebody come in your house. Now, you may not be able to get in, but it won't cost you $25,000. <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much going on in the body of Christ that people aren't listening to the Holy Ghost anymore. They get a wimp, they get a bump, they get a, they get a, a shataba, and whatever, and oh, it's God. And you know I'm talking right. Oh, yeah. We need the written word, and we need the Holy Ghost. We've got to hear from the Spirit. He will line up in principle with the written word. What well, happens when, you know, God never judges the church. Why don't we ask, um, was it Herod? Yeah. Oh. That question. So, uh, <laughs> what happened to you that day that they called you a god and you were smitten by an angel and eaten of worms yeah, right. because he gave not God the glory? We don't see. We don't like to talk about that in faith churches. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Brother Summerall said this. I, 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 I've had dinner with Brother Summerall I mean, before he went home to be with the Lord. Sat in rooms with him, listened to him with a, group, a small group of ministers. I'm talking about 10 or 15. I've sat in a room with Brother Summerall. I've sat in a room with C.M. Ward. I've sat in rooms with um, people like, along those lines and sat at their feet. Brother Summerall said this. I heard him say it with my own ears. He said, before the Lord Jesus returns, the day of, uh, of, uh, King, uh, of um, Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira will return to the church. Amen. Why? Can't you see why? Can't you see what's happening in the church? The money changers, the charlatans have come down, the carpet baggers have come down. Now, if you're a southern, you understand that. Uh -huh. Now, you northerners, we just will we'll forgive you. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you got history books. Revisionist history. <laughs> Don't y'all know there's the war of northern aggression? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing now. <laughs> Don't y'all get upset with me. You, yeah. But remember the carpetbaggers came down and, and basically stole the land for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. You know, just, just, just got the land for pennies on the dollar. And, you know, but he who wins the war gets to rewrite the history and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. It is true. We know that. Whoever wins the war gets to write the history. History is based on a true story. History is based on a true story. <laughs> that's been modified. <laughs> Yeah, we have those. Anyway, stop that. She's defending the North. <laughs> then I'll ask you this one history question. If the, North, if the Civil War was about stopping slavery, then why did the North not stop the Northern states from having slaves? Amen. That's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that, that did, and listen, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love to pick on them. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. And we're, we're glad that slavery is in. We're not propagating slavery in any way. It was the evil, it's an evil, evil, evil thing. But it's, been, it's been, but it's been all mankind all over the world throughout history. The Jews were slaves. Hello? The Jews were slaves to the Egyptians. So it's been, it's that, that the human trafficking, human slavery has been in all generations of men all over the world. It is an evil, evil thing. So I'm not, anyway, I just mess with them. Yes. Yeah, you know, just, just took the opportunity to punt, rib them a little bit. Anyway, I got off with that southern thing. Carpetbaggers, they come down these, you know what? We've got spiritual carpetbaggers. And they're coming in and they're, they're raping the churches. They're pillaging the churches to build, the, fill their pockets. And they're preaching messages that only placate the believer and don't challenge the believer. That don't address issues in the believer's hearts. You can't hold a keeping your flesh under seminar and fill up a building. I guarantee you if you hold a uh, grace seminar, you'll fill it up. Go out and say, we're going to go into Green, go to the Greensboro College and send out flyers to all the churches. Send them, get on the Christian stations. They probably won't let you on there. But get on there and tell them that at Greensboro College there is a how to keep your flesh under seminar going on and see how many people show up. Yeah, right. And you have some serious people who do want to control their flesh show up. But it won't, you, there won't be anybody coming for fluff and puff. There won't be anybody coming to get to hear. It doesn't matter what you do. God loves you anyway. Now, the reason God tells you to control your flesh is because he loves you. Because his word's already told you that if you give your sin, if you, set, if you yield your members as servants of unrighteousness, you die. Yeah, right. So he wants you to keep it under. <laughs> Amen. So we're living in an hour and a day in the church. It is vital that we not only be sticklers for the written word, but we hear the voice of the Spirit yeah, right. as he speaks into the earth. And you see the Ananias and Sapphira came. Go back and study why it happened. Because what they were bringing in the church would be destructive to the health of the church by lying to the Holy Ghost in front of everybody. And here's what, here's what Peter told them. He said, well, it was in your own hands. Was it not in your power to keep it? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? They don't like to hear that. Tough. It's in the Bible. We're whole, we're full gospel. We preach the whole thing. Even the stuff you don't like. Yeah, especially the stuff we don't like. Yeah. <laughs> so brother, and I'll tell you, I, I was at school with people. They didn't like what Brother Summerall said. I don't receive that. That's not Bible. Well, it happened in the Bible. It happened in the New Testament. It happened after the resurrection of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples had already been sent out. They were doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it happened. It happened in the church. Why? Because there were people who were bringing something into the church that would destroy it. And don't think it doesn't, you know, I'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not interested in being involved in something that's going to hurt the church. Amen? I want to carry out the will and the word of the Lord. Success is not your building, it's not the size, you, you stop following people because they got a big following. You stop following people because they're on TV in every week. And you stop following people because they wrote books. I can give you books that people wrote. You want yeah, that you, the best thing to do with it is use it for kindling, because mm -hmm. it's full of doctrine that'll mess you up. Hello, you follow the head of the church. Paul said, "Listen, Paul, Paul made a qualifier. He said, follow me as I follow the Lord.'" <clears throat> Meaning what? <clears throat> if, my, if I stop following the Lord, you better stop following me. You can only follow me as long as I'm following the Lord. If I veer off course and I'm not following the Lord, don't stop. You got to stop following me. You got to follow Jesus. Hello? That happened in Tulsa a few years ago. Uh, and, you know, everybody knows that Carlton Pierce's church, Higher Dimensions, about a, about a 5,000 member church in Tulsa. He was Carmen's pastor. Yeah. Now a lot of people don't know this, but he got a girl pregnant. She had an abortion. 
This is before the church fell apart. He came out later and repented and all that, supposedly repented and all that stuff. Uh, some of you remember Carmen left his church at one time. That's why. But it won't be a few years after that, he went to some meeting somewhere and got one of a bunch of homosexuals, supposed to be church of homosexuals, and they washed his feet and he came back and said that God's going to save everybody and started preaching universalism. Mm -hmm. Church in less than two years went to nothing. I'm not talking, <clears throat> he, the doors are shut. Yeah. He's not even in the city anymore. He went to Oral Roberts and he went to somebody else and they called him in and said, stop preaching this, it's error. He got on a television station and said, I know what I am preaching is contrary to that book, but I know I'm right. Don't tell me that things are going to keep staying the same. God's not going to keep putting up with it. Jesus is coming soon. Look at the signs of the times. Things are, things are happening, and we better be listening to the voice of the Spirit, and we better be making sure the church is stable, and the church has the finances to do its job, and we're, we're being faithful to the things of God, and faithful to church, and faithful to hear the Word of God, and I'm we're, on, we're on track with God. We're going to have to start do, stop living like uh, that, that we're living in some era where nothing's ever going to change, nothing's ever going to matter, and start living like Jesus is coming back any second. Dad Hagen used to say this, and I'm going to close with this statement. He said, plan like Jesus isn't coming back for 50 years, but live like he's coming back any second. Go ahead and make your plans, but keep your life straight and right all the time. Good. Amen. I heard him say it more than once. You can go ahead and have your business plan, your church growth plan, your, your family plans for the next 50 years, but you live your life like at any second the Lord will return. Amen. We live like Jesus. We, we've got to get to the lost. We've got to VIP people. We've got to, get our, we've got to go tell people that Jesus loves them. We've got to invite them to church, get them saved, get them discipled. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got, to, we've got the little cards out there. You know, how do I lead into this? Uh, you know, we want, to, we want to show kindness to people. Cut your neighbor's grass. Rake their leaves. Go bake them something for Christmas and give it to them. Amen. Pay for the meal, the drive through. Give them something, you know, give the tip, the 25% uh, tip to the waitress. But just don't do that. Give them the car and say, you're a very important person. Amen. Let's build the kingdom. Show people we care. Grow our church so we can, we can do more for the kingdom. Yeah. We want to do more for the kingdom. We want to reach more people with the full gospel. We want to equip more people how to live above and not beneath. I don't want just to have people transfer over and sit here as a spiritual couch potato that when the bomb hits, they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. We want to train them. Amen? So that when, they, when the enemy attacks, they're equipped to win. And that's going to take, take us doing the work, work and will of God. Amen? And you know what else it's going to take? It's going to take us living what we preach. Right. You can't be coming here and say, I'm going to live on 10 and give 90 and sit around and cuss when you get mad at somebody. Yeah. Or talk about you want to go get you a long neck. And we ain't talking about a Pepsi-Cola either. Talking about a Bud Light or something. Hello? Oh, it's all right for me to drink. You know, I'm going to tell you something. How are you going to minister to the alcoholic when you've got your Chardonnay in your hand? <sighs> Shoot! <laughs> My way. <laughs> man, you need some Jesus, man. Yeah, I was stoned out, man. I serve y'all, man. Don't do about a thing. Well, you're gonna be a real effective ministry, aren't you? I got my dreads, man. I know. I, I serve the lion. Ah, uh, yeah. You and Bob Marley or Ziggy Marley or whoever else. You can't minister somebody stoned. We need to live a life that represents the head of the... I said I was going to close with Dad Hagen's statement, but let me, say, let me start with this one. I don't know why I'm way over here today. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm challenging you. Let's step up and get busy about the kingdom. All right, good. There's stuff going on in the world. We got to get busy. Yeah. 
We need to be in church. You're going to have to sacrifice your back end to get here sometime. Uh -huh. Sacrifice it. And get blessed. And get blessed. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. But we got to get busy about the kingdom of God. I was going to make a statement. I forgot what it was. Hallelujah. I'm going to come right over here because this is where I lost it. Maybe I'll find it over here. <laughs> well, I said that Dad, you know, I said, I said, I'd said what I, you know, I was going to stop with what Dad Hagen had to say. <sighs> I was good. <laughs> Praise God. It was really good. We got to get busy about the things of God. We get serious about the things of God. It's got to be about building the kingdom and not building our own personal wealth bank in life. We got to be serious about reaching because there's just things going on on the earth that I'm telling you, you've got to be prepared to deal with it. You've got to be prepared to deal with it. If you don't get doing what God has for you to do, you won't be. And I, I never got it back. I'll, I'll find it. God will bring it to me. You might get it tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. So stand up. Yeah. Anybody here need to get right with the Lord? You're backslidden. You ain't serving the Lord. You know it. You need to get down here and repent and get right. Anybody? All right. Anybody never been saved in your life at all? Just, just, just heathen. God will de-heathenize you. He'll make you righteous. And I'm not talking about like the righteous brothers. I'm talking about righteous, righteous. Hello. Anybody, anybody here need to be filled with the Holy Ghost? You're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't speak in tongues. Well, the hands on and get you filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody? Anybody need healing? Anybody breathing? Yeah. Four of you, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. What you need? Okay. Well, we just we can't keep that, can we? Stretch your hands out. Yeah. Hallelujah in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we th well, uh, okay. I don't, know. I don't do this often, but if he says do it, I do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, listen, we just have to obey the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. He said anoint him with oil, so I want to obey God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you said, <laughs> oh, that, that we lay hands on the sick, the anointing of oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and if they committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. But Father, we lay hands on him right now, Mark, right now in the name of Jesus. We command the healing. We command it to be made whole. We command it. Be made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We command the rupture to be made whole, the tear and the tissue to be healed and mended with no scarring but complete soundness and wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. We'll call you healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Grinding. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, it's, it's from stress. So, Father, we lay hands on Sandy right now in Jesus' name. That will just we command the spirit of peace to come on her. We rebuke this stress, and we and the release of the tension in her jaws in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else before we go? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Anybody? Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we want you to know we love you. We're for you. And I, listen, it'd be a whole lot better for me, for me on a personal level not to preach a message like I preach today because then I don't make anybody upset. <laughs> Just, right. But I tell you what, I'd rather not upset God oh, yeah. Yeah. and give you what you need to challenge you. Yep. It's not preached to get at you. It's preached to help you. We know. Yeah, amen. Because God loves you. And I'm obedient to the master because he wants to help you. And he wants to challenge you and he wants to tell you no. There's times he needs to be told no. Amen.